that on the speech. Werner von Sale. G strings and all that There really are just three things you need to know to determine the extent to which you are attracted to someone. The, fir <laughs> the first thing is the number 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. It is, it is, in other words, a very small number, but just bear with me. The second thing is the distance between you and the other person. Naturally enough, the closer you are, the more attracted you will be. Unless, of course, you've been having conversations with someone like Captain Morgan. <laughs> the third thing is the mass of you and the other person. Now, I'm not suggesting we all jump on a scale. It's just that in the universe, on the grandest of scales, we all exert a, an attractive force on each other. Yes, I'm talking about... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about physical attractiveness and yes I'm talking about the scientist Isaac Newton's universal formula for gravitation which you can use to determine the attractive force between two objects or people so no I am not talking about the type of physical attractiveness you probably had in mind <laughs> Complex behavior can often be described in really simple terms, what we will call simple rules. With just the three rules I just described, it's possible to determine the timing of the ocean tides, the orbits of planets around the sun, how to send spacecraft to other planets, on and on and on. But these simple rules are not only relevant to um, space, they also apply to and, and help explain how birds manage to flock together, how trees manage to branch, how your, the cells in your body divide, how bacteria manage to find your food, and, and spiders manage to weave these really intricate web patterns. But simple rules are not only applicable to things we can see, they're also applicable to the domain of the auditory in the form of music. Now every note vibrates like ripples on a pond. And when you play two notes one after the other and their frequencies meet up nicely with each other, they are said to sound pleasant to our ears. However, when the frequencies of the subsequent notes do not meet up nicely with each other, they are said to sound complex and they sound harsh or jarring, as in the case with jazz. If you have ever listened to jazz, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is essentially just a cacophony of chaos. <laughs> Now, when you listen to your favorite music, on the other hand, um, your, brain, <laughs> your brain waves actually synchronize to the beat of the music, putting you in a focused, relaxed, or even an energized state of yourself. Now, musicians know that they can play more than one note at a time, called a chord. Now, these simple rules that govern these chords are mind-bogglingly fascinating. Unfortunately, I do not have time to go into detail. Just know that um, musicians use these simple rules about these chords to elicit very specific emotions, almost at will, such as happiness, sadness, or a somber mood. As any guitarist know, to elicit a romantic, seductive mood, plucking the G string usually does the trick. <laughs> 
So simply by changing the beat of this tune, it's possible to change the mood of this tune. I referred to I drew a parallel between the brain and music now it's my belief that our identity who we are is based not only on the organization of our brain cells but also the space between the brain cells called your synapses similarly in music a song's essence is based not only on the organization of this notes but also on the space between the notes, the silences. Simple rules explain so much of what we often think of as complicated or complex. Indeed, as I just described, the most attractive thing on earth is the gravity beneath your feet. Explained by just, <laughs> by just <laughs> really, just explained by three simple rules. Nature sounds its secrets through simple rules because simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Mr. Wow. Toastmaster. <laughs>